Hi and welcome back. Well, you can see we're in our van and it feels so good to be driving in our van again after months. And we're doing a little exploring this time. We have some treats in store for you. Stay tuned. Chunk of lunch. She wants chunk of lunch, Judy. She does. I can't blame her. And you know what I want? What? I want an espresso. Mm. Well, we had a little bit of uh, some spillage here with that. The espresso machine. Let's see if we can get her this espresso. Chin is. <laughs> Moving. Yeah. Poor thing. Okay, I'll get your espresso. Uh, espresso. I'll get your chunk of lunch first. Yeah. What's going on, Gigi? What? Well, the important thing is, Gigi wants chunk of lunch, so we She's stopped hungry. here at this rest area, and she knows the routine. She gets a little bit of chunk of lunch, and we get some, I get espresso, and we get a little snack to eat. There's your bowl. Yeah, people would say, how come she's up on the counter? She's got very clean feet. Very clean. How are you, Gigi? Pretty girl. Why are you ignoring mother? Because she wants to eat. Excuse me. You can't find one open? Oh, he did. Are you hungry, sweet baby? Yes, she's hungry. <laughs> yes. Here, let me get it out there. There you go. There you go. Just a little chunk of lunch. And so now you're going to make an espresso for yourself? Yep. And are you using an espresso pod? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot easier than, uh, you know, forming it into a, a puck. Right. Although this machine, you can do it with a puck, but uh, what the huck? <laughs> <laughs> How has the drive been so far? Oh, it's been wonderful. I've, I've been driving along, except it's been sort of windy. You know, we got a couple things like that, but not bad. Not yeah, in the bad. van, it's not quite as no. rough. All right, espresso. Oh, Are you going to oh have God, one or not? You should see the side of your shirt. She must have rubbed up on you. Oh, yeah? Nope, on the other side. Just solid fur. The oh, back. yeah, that's when I carried her out, oh. I think. Now, you don't want one? No. How is it, Gigi? Is it good? She said I was hungry. Yeah. <laughs> then you throw it on the ground because you're showing off. Uh -huh.
nothing fell out. That's good. Now we're looking for a little. Ah, there it is. A little espresso Jan, cup. Jan got these for yeah. us. Nice, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll move your food over here a little bit, Gigi. There we go. I can't see my machine. I moved it over. Oops. Down. Yep. And then like that. Oh, generator. I'm gonna turn the generator on. She says, "What's that?" That's just the generator. Spoons were they up here or down there? Do you I remember? Have no idea. Oh, your little spoon? Yeah. I thought it was down there, but oh, I don't know. It could be. No, it could be in there. Yeah, I think it's up oh, there. Oh, there yeah. it is. Little mm. silver spoon. It was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see. Gold, Jerry, gold. All right, don't rub it in. <laughs> and what I normally do is go like this. To, geez. Oh, man. It's, it's really sl ah, suction down. Jeez. Okay, never mind. I guess I won't do that. I was trying to tilt it back, mm -hmm. but it's got a suction cup really holding it on. Ooh, that looks good. It smells nice. Yeah. Fills the coach with the smell of coffee. Mm. Yeah. Good. Let's try it. All right, then you turn it off. And Gigi goes and lays down. She's good. She's, she says, I might have to roll over. I might not. Oh, you need your massage, don't you? <laughs> she says, yes. Yeah, that's a big truck out there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that back end gets stiff, especially on a day of driving. Yeah, does that feel good? Does that feel good, huh? Does that feel good? Yes. Your father is rinsing this cup out. That's good. I want a radish. Okay. as quick as a little break here. Hmm. Nice little break, huh? That would have been three fifty to six dollars in a coffee shop for yep. you. How much did it cost you? Zero. No, well, it didn't cost nothing. I got the.
radishes already. Mmm. <laughs> you don't want a radish. I don't know. <laughs> she says it's uh, not too bad. Doesn't smell bad. Mm -mm. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It doesn't have a smell that I know of. No, it doesn't. Mm -mm. Got a big taste, mm -hmm. but not much of a smell. Yep. Hmm. Never thought about that. Did you get something out of there or did it pop yeah, open? Yeah, I got this oh. uh, camera out of there. All right, well. Well, I put your food down here, by the way, Gigi. Did you want some more of your chunk of lunch? Oh, man, you got a string of spit on you there. <laughs> there. Let me get it off there. Jeez. Let me get Probably it off. Probably drooling from her, yeah. from her massage. Probably. You want your chunk down here? Chunk of lunch? Here, I'll help you down. Ow! Don't hurt me. There you yeah, go. all here. It's all fur. All right, well. Yeah, and we're at a rest area. Just outside and, uh, Omaha. What's this lady doing? <laughs> there go. My mouth was open. She didn't like her either. She came at the back of our van. Did she walk behind? She might have pulled behind us even. Who knows? Let's see here. Oh yeah, there's something back there. Okay. Well, you ready? Yep. You ready, Kitty? You ready to go again? She got a new toy here. Oh, look at her. She loves this toy, Judy. I know Judy. she likes it. You laughed at him. <laughs>the homestead act of 1862 signed by president lincoln it said that anyone over the age of 21 or the head of a household could qualify for up to 160 acres of free land if you lived on that land for five years built a home of some kind and harvested crops basically you had to build the land up and uh, actually on this spot because right out that window right over there is the original homestead of daniel freeman He's considered to be the first homesteader in America because by coincidence he was able to sign for his patent shortly after midnight on January 1st, 1863. That's when the law took effect. And uh, we're also in front of the tractor belonging to the last homesteader in America. His name is Ken Deerdorf and he was from Alaska. Believe it or not, the act lasted until 1983. Excuse me, 1986. 1976 in the lower 48 states, but since they just acquired Alaska in 59, they wanted to uh, basically get it settled. So they gave homesteaders another 10 years as long as it was only in Alaska. So in 1986, the act finally ended. Out the back door and down the path about 50 yards, there's an authentic 1867 homesteader cabin. It was taken from a homestead 14 miles north of here. When you get a chance to look in there, that was the home of 12 people. They raised 10, 10 kids in there. Sticks. I wonder if Gigi would do that. <laughs> she wouldn't pull a very big stick at anything. No. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, wherever that thing went. It's a little spider, that's all. Yeah, he's right there. God, he jumped out at you. Did he really? Sort of, yeah. But he, he jumped and sort of went down. Go now. Oh, yeah. Said 12, 12 people. Yep. Well, oh. the upstairs, that's probably where all the kids slept. So 12 people lived in here. 
Yeah, they didn't even have a kitchen. Probably did most of the, well, right there on that stove, or did some outside. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Well, we're making some coffee. It's about, uh, what time is it? About 6.30, 7, something like that. And uh, slept good. Turned the heater on early this morning uh, because it was kind of cold. And boy, that heater works great. Warmed it up really nice. Gigi's helping us make coffee today. Gigi, did you learn how to make coffee? What are you looking at down there? Yeah, so we're making uh, coffee the old-fashioned way with a coffee maker. This Harvest Host uh, location is really nice. Um, very level concrete pads. They're the uh, newest power, uh, uh, post. whatever, power posts that I've ever seen in my life for a campground. Right down there. There's uh, four all together. We were the only ones here last night. A fanta Well, I had a fantastic meal. It was uh, a cheeseburger and onion rings and a Blue Moon beer, and it was great. Judy had cod. It was good. It, it was, good. was just, you know, yeah. cod and french fries, but it was, it was good. So... So today we're going to explore a little bit more in Beatrice. We discovered the way you pronounce this town is Beatrice. And uh, I thought it was Beatrice, but Beatrice we discovered. And so we'll go to the visitor center and see what they uh Would you say the town is 12,000 Yeah, the population is about 12,000 people. It was really nice here last night. Uh, let me show you outside my window. Nice little bench over there. I see a mushroom in the ground. Mm -hmm. Bike path or walking path. It's nice. Oh yeah, bike path right over there. Very quiet, very peaceful. Very nice place to spend the night. People inside were uh, um, very down home, normal people. Very yeah. good people in there. It's a real good Harvest House location. Okay, let's get some coffee going. Yes. Okay, right over there is the American Legion here in Beatrice. And a uh, huge, big gravel area that I suppose we could park our rig at if we weren't uh, using their, uh, their pads. But... You can see how beautiful these pads are. Beautiful concrete pads, like the posts are brand new. Now here's where we stayed right here. Usually, by the way, you won't find this kind of deal at a harvest host. You won't find uh, concrete pads, you won't find power, you won't find full hookups. Uh, but here in uh, the American Legion in Beatrice, um, you do. All right, let's take a look inside, see how everybody's doing. Where's the kitty cat? Right there on the oh, there she is right there. Well, we've had our breakfast. I had some oatmeal. We've had our coffee. Uh, we had some bacon, and yeah. it was good. It was very good. Mm-hmm. We got uh, some fresh water. I did some fresh water in the tank. I actually emptied all this water and brought it back up again to about 67%. And the reason was I had some, um, I had put some bleach in it, but maybe I put too much bleach because it, it was, it smelled awfully strong. So I flushed that out and we've got our brand new water in it, which is good. So, okay, well, I think the next thing is disconnect the power and then we're gonna move forward a bit and I'm gonna dump that tank. Okay, let's go. Oh, 
you're in Beatrice, Nebraska, and you're inside the original 1906 Burlington Northern Passenger Depot Station um, that was built. Um, Beatrice had three railroad line, um, well, actually seven railroad lines and three railroad depots. So we had a UP depot, a, Be a Burlington depot, and a Rock Island depot here in Beatrice. This is the only depot left, and um, in 73, the Historical Society acquired it and it became our museum. Yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it looks neat in here. Yeah. The woodwork is all original, the tiling is all original. So. The what railroad? Burlington, Burlington Northern. Okay. I guess I should say um, CB and Q, because in the time in 1906, it was CB and Q. And what is CB and Q? Uh, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy oh, Railroad. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. And then, um, CB and Q didn't become Burlington Northern until 70, 1971. So um, that's that's the. <laughs> but everybody, even the newspapers, say Burlington. They never usually say CB and Q. It was mm. always fashionable to say Burlington. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, if you go north, the North Hall begins with our early history. So we were the site of the Big Blue Reservation for the Oto Missouri tribe. Um, and then after the Homestead Act and the coming in of settlers, the United States government removed them from Nebraska down to Oklahoma. And all, like the Mennonite Hospital was one of five hospitals that was only allowed in Nebraska to treat polio. So we actually mm. have an iron lung on display as well as a 1901 x-ray machine because Dr. Fall, who um, is actually Daniel Boone's cousin, came to Beatrice and he brought with him the very first x-ray machine to Nebraska. We have a, a sister on display. Her one strikes me too, it's the Oregon Trail. Okay, so what we're doing is we're walking to the Rock Creek Station um, buildings. And uh, we've never been here before, but it looks pretty interesting. It looks like a cemetery. <clears throat> Could be mocked up. If anybody's home. Yeah. Knock knock. Pony Express Stage and Freight Hickok McCandless. Talking about McCandless too. Yeah. And the Rock Creek Post Office. Huh. All right. Rock Creek Crossing. The rocky area in the creek bottom, straight down the bank from this information board, is the site of the original Rock Creek Crossing. Rock Creek was a difficult crossing for the wagon trains. Often, such creek crossing through the prairies of Nebraska caused more problems for the weary pioneer traveler than crossing a river did. Rock Creek Station might have faded into obscurity if not for what happened in 1861, when James Butler Hickok, Wild Bill, killed David McCandless there and began his career as a gunfighter. Rock Creek Station was established along the Oregon Trail to sell supplies and other services to the thousands of people going west, and also was a relay station for the Pony Express. Well, just looking at these two photos, look at them very carefully. Uh, this first one is from a, a drawing, reproduced from a drawing in 1859. And this one up here, uh, 1860, and they believe the person on the right, the writer, is David McCandless. And then 
look what you see today and they have it fairly well reproduced. So we are sitting out here at the campground and we're eating a salad. And then what is this you've got here, Gordon? Tripod torch. A tripod torch, and we have a small cast iron skillet on it. And I have some steak seasoned and ready to go. Just seasoned with salt and Montreal seasoning. And there's a little olive oil in the pan, so we're heating it up nice and hot. And we'll have some steaks and a potato salad for dinner. Uh, why don't I order for both of us? Uh, we'll have two filet mignon. Okay, what these are is they are bacon-wrapped filet mignon from our local fairway store and all I've done is put salt and uh, Montreal steak seasoning on it I'm not one of those fancy chefs I just like to eat good pepper well the Montreal steak seasoning doesn't it uh oh okay let's see how it goes here it's been heating up got a nice little sizzle and look we can fit two in the pan now these have got a little blue not, oh, you know what? That's probably to hold the bacon on there. I'm not going to take it out. I thought maybe it was going to pop out when it was done. <laughs> so we have that hooked up to our van on the Quick Connect, and this is called a tripod torch. Um, it's got three metal plates coming up. When you put those three metal plates on there, you can actually place a, like a lodge pan right on top and cook on it. If you, um, and let me show you here. Okay, you can take one of those off and then you have the heat directed to you from two uh, panels, or you can take them all off and just have the heat coming up. But the nice thing about that, have at least one on there and it directs the heat of the flame right to um, whoever's sitting here. So, that's pretty cool. And that screen can pop out. I put a piece of wood here to sort of, you know, make it hard for her to get underneath, whatever. But, uh, she's very smart, so she could get out if, uh, if we weren't careful. And... I walked forward and hit my head on that headliner thing again. Oh. Yeah, which always feels good. You know that. You know, it's time to get rid of this van. Sick of it. <laughs> I've got my thermocell down here. Hopefully propelling, or propelling, <laughs> repelling insects and mosquitoes and things like that. Plus it smells good. Yeah, it does. So now we just have to wait for the steaks, which will probably take a little while. Maybe, I don't know if we need to turn that up a little bit or not. That it means turn it up. But I think it needs to be turned up a bit. I'll turn it up a bit. Tell me what you think here. Okay. You're turning it down. Okay. That's probably good. I think that came up some. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to tell you about salads that I've fallen in love with is the kind of lettuce that you use. And what's that kind I love? Butter. Butter lettuce. Oh, my God. A friend of mine at ORI used it all the time, and it is so delicious. It's so soft and so good. And it might be a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. It is just fantastic. If you've never used it, use it. You'll fall in love with that lettuce. And it turned out just perfect. It's got just a little pink to it. It's in potato salad and we are eating. Is Gigi your dinner guest? She's, uh, I don't know what she is. She's like an advisor, I think. What do you think, Gigi? Does it look good? She says it smells awfully damn good. 
frying here. Okay, we are now at the Fairbury uh, Museum, City yeah. Museum. And, and it's really got tons of interesting stuff. This yeah. happens to be the Pioneer Furniture Room, I think. Military room and a circus room and all the history around here from the colleges and everything. And we found a doll modeled after Gordon when he was a baby. <laughs> he only had one, two. You know, red hair too. Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> Precious. Here's the uh, Erector set I used to have as a kid. Yeah, I had these wheels like that right there, too. Oh, I'm See, and you had screws, and you had these things, and you could just make all kinds of things with it. That used to be entertainment right That's there. Right. 3D glasses, and you could, uh, oh, look at all the pictures you can look at. Mm-hmm. Whole bunches of them. Neat. Well, it's an hour's off duty. Oh. <laughs> what was that? She was in her 90. Oh. <laughs> huh. Vacuums. Oh, wow. The first motorized cleaner, but it didn't suck in dirt, but used compressed air to blow dirt away. <laughs> <laughs> Start at one end and blow it out to the other? I guess. And what's nice is not everything's behind glass here. You can right. really get up close and see it. Grandpa's Wonder Pine Tar Toilet Soap. We're in the fossil room at the Fairbury City Museum. And uh, what the uh, director up there was just telling us yes. was that this area in itself is extraordinary and uh, because of all the fossils they've got. There's a lower mammoth jaw, and there's one with uh, teeth intact. See? Oh, yeah. Recovery site near local sand pit in Jefferson County in 1927. There is a picture of it. Wow. Pretty cool. See that hot dog? Yeah, Get out. hot dog, potato salad, baked beans with some smoked sausage. Push her down, will you? Oh, and yeah. Gigi, and then Judy got baked beans on my shirt. I think we'll call that a wrap. Hey, thanks for watching. We sure do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And if you liked watching us make those two steaks on that tripod torch, uh, be sure to watch this next video. It's got the inventor of the tripod torch on there explaining the whole thing. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.